Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Take Back My Brain. I'm your host, Lori Hammer, and we are continuing in our gut series today. I'm super excited. If you haven't caught any of the other videos, make sure you go back and listen to the other ones. They are a wealth of information. I also have a couple of interviews with some experts that joined me um, to share a lot of gut wealth of information with you as well. And I also want to remind you at the end of this month, there will be a masterclass on gut health that is exclusive to my Calm Mom community. That information will be in the show notes where you can register and join the Calm Mom community so that you can participate in a masterclass every single month. You'll have access to all the past ones, all the future ones, and all the special stuff that I share or will be sharing with that Calm Mom community. It is launching now, so there's a special offer, so make sure you check that out. And I'm excited to dive into today, which is going to be maybe a little bit more science-y, so hold on to your seat, work through some of the science-y stuff with me, because um, we're going to talk about your immune system, okay, which is really, really important. So your microbiome, your gut microbiome influences everything in your body, including your immune system. So your immune system, about 80 to 85% of that resides in your gut lining. That's how important your gut health is. I keep saying that over and over again, we have to fix your gut. Even if you don't have gut quote unquote issues, if you have an autoimmune disease, if you have anxiety, depression, if you have any of those things, your gut has to be addressed. So I like to think of the immune system um, in our gut, in the wall, as an army. So we have an army of microbes in our body. And so that communicates with our immune system. And really, I don't think you can really separate them because if you don't have the microbes, you can't have an immune system. But the big guns are like, you know, the generals, the corporals, you know, the officers, those are all residing there in the gut and communicating and directing everything to work smoothly to attack foreign invaders <clears throat> and keep our defensives strong. So when that doesn't happen, when the gut microbiome, all the little soldiers aren't healthy, then that's when our whole system gets weak. The fort basically breaks down, burns up and everything comes in and attacks us. And we don't want that. So, cause your gut flora is actually feeding, it's nourishing, it's balancing, and it's keeping us healthy and well, and our immune system super strong. So one of the biggest important parts of our immune system is the lymph system. And my colleague and friend, Caitlin from the Doc Talks Detox, check her out on Instagram, follow her, do everything she says about lymph because she's spot on about everything. So I don't need to teach you all that because she does a bang up job on all of that. So make sure you follow the Doc Talks Detox. And Caitlin is amazing. She says like the lymph is like the forgotten stepsister because we just really forget about our lymph. We just take it for granted. It's a network um, just right underneath our skin, but it's communicating with everything in our body. And a lot of our, our immune system is located in there as well. And she does a great job of explaining that because that network actually traps and neutralizes a lot of microbes that we don't want in our body, a lot of toxins. And then if we're not taking care of that lymph system, we're not working on that microbiome, then that's when um, those toxins just kind of sit in there. So we got to keep that moving. We got to keep that flushing out. And so she talks a lot about a lot of those great things and how to do that. So make sure you follow her. That's my plug for Caitlin today. So, um, the lymph tissue is present in every mucous membrane in the body. So it's going to be your nose, your eyes, your mouth, et cetera. And so we want to make sure that as that is coming in, that our lymph is able to deal with it. And so your microbe um, is what's memorizing all of that in there. So your immune system is responding. The microbe is saying, hey, this isn't supposed to be here, right? And so your immune system says, oh, Okay, and then it makes a memory of it and it communicates to every other cell in the body and your flora in your body is part of that network system. So if something happens in your nose, it's gonna tell your gut. So your whole immune system develops a memory, just like the memory that we have in our brain. And so it's really important that those mucous membranes are richly populated in a beautiful flora and that flora is not in balance so that your lymph tissue actually has the opportunity to respond correctly. So your immune system is also your very hungry, hungry 
organ, okay? It needs to be fed all the time. And so we talked about in the last episode about those microbes help to break down food to nourish everything in our body. And that includes our immune system. So if your body is not able to break down and assimilate your food, then that makes your immune system weak. And that's when we develop autoimmune conditions. And so if you have an autoimmune condition, you got to fix the gut, right? Because we have to be able to break down all the nutrition that, that we are ingesting into our bodies. And so let's talk about a cold. So a child should, when you get a cold or an adult, generally we have a fever, okay? And that fever is an immune response. The cold didn't cause the fever, that virus didn't. That's not the fever trigger. The immune system is the fever trigger, okay? And we want the body to create that fever in order to deal with that virus. And that actually strengthens the microbiome in your body when that process happens. I know that sounds counterintuitive in the modern age, because we're all about suppressing the fever, suppressing the symptoms. And while that's uncomfortable, that's actually needed in our body to strengthen it, to develop a healthier microbiome. You have to let your body do what your body was designed to do. And one of those beautiful things is a fever. And when we don't allow the body to have a fever, we lose that defense mechanism. and then that virus gets to wreak havoc in our body. And then we develop all sorts of different things, right? And then all of a sudden our body feels awful from head to toe, we're anxious, we're depressed. And what do we do? We go to the doctor and they're like, oh, you're anxious and depressed. Well, we better put you on an anti-anxiety medication because that's going to you know, fix the problem and then you won't be anxious and depressed anymore. They're not addressing the root cause your microbiome is messed up. I have this precious client. She's very young. She's, she's um, about 12 years old and she feels like she's in misery all the time. Like she hurts from head to toe. She's anxious. She's depressed. And we did a test on her. Guess what? She is full of different kinds of viruses, full of different kinds of viruses because her immune system has not responded properly. And they were trying to deal with anxiety and depression with medication, but that's not going to fix the issue. Can it help in certain circumstances so that you can actually get to the root cause? Yes, I'm not opposed to that. And I understand that, but that can't be the root cause. And they've been told that she probably has maybe some bipolar issues, et cetera, et cetera. When in fact, she is full of con all different kinds of viruses and her microbiome is messed up. So don't you think if we dealt with that, we decreased the inflammation in her body, we balanced her microbiome that her brain would work well and she wouldn't have mood swings and she wouldn't have that bipolar diagnosis? Yes, that is so true, right? Allow your body what your body was designed to do so that your immune system can do what it was designed to do so that you don't develop all these chronic conditions. Does she do anything for this? No, she's, she's born this way. Her immune system was already depleted. Her mom did everything, quote unquote, right. You know, she had a healthy pregnancy. She had all of these wonderful things going for her. Unfortunately, her body, her genetic combination or whatever, she was just maybe more susceptible to more toxins, right? I don't know. We don't know the, you know, the reason why her body would respond differently than, than another child, maybe in the similar circumstances. But the fact is, is that her body is overrun with viruses and she doesn't really get sick and have high fevers. But as we're trying to heal her, she's developing some low grade fevers. And that is a really good thing. So I want to encourage all you parents out there for yourselves and for your kids, allow your kids to have a fever, allow the inflammation to come, allow yourself to feel crappy. Okay. So that your immune system grows stronger. You strengthen your microbiome and then you're not going to get sick as often. And I can attest to this. My kids, neither of my kids have had antibiotics and my son is going to be 25. Neither of them never had an antibiotic. Never. Okay. I've never... My son had a little bit of Tylenol um, because I was basically forced into um, vaccinating him when I was a single mom. That's another story. We'll get into that a different day. Um, but a little bit of Tylenol, but my daughter's never had any of that. I've never suppressed their fevers. And guess what? 
they didn't really didn't get sick growing up. And if they did, it was done in 24 to 48 hours because I let their immune system do what their immune system was designed to do, okay? And neither of them have really any chronic autoimmune conditions. Some issues because nothing is really perfect, but they don't have autoimmune conditions that are rampant like a lot of the clients that I see. So it's really, really important to avoid chronic viral infections. If you have an Epstein-Barr issue, if you have a, um, maybe you have a Lyme issue, maybe you have, you know, another type of virus that causes an immune response with a fever, make sure you're allowing your body to have that fever. It's a really, really good thing. And then that helps your microbiome in your gut because that's where that, that uh, it has to shift there. Because remember, there's a river of toxicity when our gut microbiome is toxic. And then that toxicity from our gut is going to flow elsewhere into our body. Because like I said, in the leaky gut talk, you know, the things that aren't supposed to be in our gut will go into our bloodstream. And so we want to make sure our immune system can respond appropriately to avoid that toxicity becoming systemic throughout our entire body. We don't want that leaky gut. So we want to do everything we can to fix that. And here's where we're going to get a little bit sciencey. We're going to talk about two different parts to our immune system. Hopefully this will make a little more sense to you. So we have the non-specific response to the immune system. That's like you get a stuffy nose, your eyes water, you sneeze, you get a cold, um, you get a fever, maybe diarrhea, vomiting, your immune system says, we're dealing with this and we're dealing with it now, okay? That's when most of us suppress our symptoms, okay? So when we are chronically suppressing our symptoms and not allowing our body to do what it was designed to do to have diarrhea, to go ahead and throw up, to you need to rest, right? We need to rest and allow our body to work through that. When we don't do that, we get what's called a specific response in the immunity. And this kind of triggers out of our gut toxicity, okay? But this is when we have a chronic immune system response, which is where autoimmunity comes from, okay? And so we have this constant response from our immune system that says, I need to attack something. These things aren't right. We've got undigested proteins here. We've got this, we've got that, and I need to address that. And so that's when you're going to have that inevitable disease process that starts to develop. And you're like, oh my goodness, what's happening? And so often when that happens, we get on immune suppressing drugs, right? And so the theory is if we suppress the immune system, then that should fix the issue. Well, most of the time it doesn't, or it just slows the progression but most of the time you're told there's no fix for your condition, right? You have an autoimmune condition, you will always have an autoimmune condition. But what if that theory is incorrect? So this is what I'm going to pose to you, okay? So we have what's called the molecular mimicry phen phenomenon, okay? Which is kind of currently what most of mainstream medical thinks about. So this is a theory that states that your immune system develops antibodies, which are specific weapons that it's supposed to develop. It was gonna fight something, but then it actually mistakes your own body processes, your own cellular makeup, your own genetics. It mistakes that and starts attacking it. So say you have Hashimoto's. So the molecular mimicry phenomenon is that it thinks your thyroid is a foreign invader, okay? I honestly don't necessarily believe that, okay? I, th I think there's a lot of research out there that's proving that incorrect and that it doesn't make a lot of physiological sense. If we believe that our innate intelligence in our body is as superior and amazing as it is because we were created in the image of God, then, then that shouldn't happen, right? Okay, we shouldn't mistake our own body tissue for a foreign invader. So why would your immune system make that mistake? Um, this theory just really says that our, our immune system just doesn't know the difference. So, and I, and I don't really believe that, okay? So the reason, one of the reasons why I don't believe this, I was reading about this, and in the case of rheumatic fever, which is where molecular mimicry actually comes from, um, that they discovered that the real cause of that disease is kind of debated but that it uh, produces an antibody against a protein in a bacteria, okay? What are we talking about? The gut microbiome, that's a lot of bacteria. So against a protein in a bacterium, specifically beta hemolytic streptococcus, that's the strep that causes strep throat, okay? 
There's cases where antibiotics are a good thing. I think strep throat is probably one of those things if, if you need to use an antibiotic because well, since the development of antibiotics, rheumatic fever incidences and heart damage and those types of things from that fever have definitely decreased. So again, there's always a time and place for medication and there's a lot of overuse of it, okay? So strep throat. And it is thought that this protein is similar to the protein valves in our heart. So if we're doing molecular, molecular mimicry theory, the theory states that the immune system um, has this weapon against the streptococcus and that since the heart valve looks similar, it's going to attack us. My thought process and my one of the people that I follow for years and years and years, Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride, is that what if it's an evasion against the bacteria and the toxins from that bacteria are the thing that's actually damaging the heart valve. Does that make sense? So instead of our body mistaking it, it's attacking the bacteria, which has been attacking the heart valve. Okay, so there's that type of microbial imbalance. And so I think that's what happens in a lot of our immune system. So let's go a little step further. Uh, that it's the toxin or the incorrectly broken down protein, which is a toxin in our body that our body is actually going after. Our immune system is actually going after. And I think there's some really good research confirming this. There's an enzyme called microbial transglutaminase. And this thing is actually, um, it, it binds to specific proteins and forms the glue. It forms like a glue. So a lot of people celiac disease, you know, when you eat gluten, you kind of form the gluey stuff, or if you're sensitive to dairy, there's a glue that forms. Okay. So that's going to be your microbial transglutaminase. And in 1989, uh, this microbial transglutaminase um, started being used in a lot of baked products, a lot of processed meats, um, processed foods, um, and just like breads and cakes and desserts and all those kind of things and gelatin in particular. So if you eat a lot of jello, um, the, that would have the transglutaminase, microbial transglutaminase in there. And so it's gonna create this sticky mess. And so what happens is these proteins that are linked to this are damaging the gut lining. So this is what the research has been showing. And then that damage of the gut lining is triggering that autoimmune response, okay? And so the average Western world person actually consumes about 15 milligrams of these microbial transglutaminases in processed food. So one way to avoid that, don't eat junk, don't eat crappy food, and then you're not gonna get exposed to that. But one of the cool things is, why I think this happens, is that your body also produces transglutaminases, okay? And so that structure is actually different. And so I don't think it's attacking the same glutaminase because our body can make its own glue to bind things together. And when the research is showing that it's, our immune system is not attacking that which we have created, it's attacking that which we have not created or what that microbial imbalance has caused that incorrect protein breakdown. So I hope that's making sense. I know this is a little more sciencey than I normally get into and I wanna keep it clear, but it's really important to know that when we suppress the immune system at the very basic level is when we get into the autoimmune response. And so I'm going to encourage all of you, let your body do what your body was designed to do, heal that gut microbiome and you're gonna feel so much better. So I really think a lot of these autoimmune conditions are what's called contamination disease instead of an autoimmune condition. I think they're contaminated with the wrong kind of bacteria and a lot of toxins produced by this toxic bacteria. And a lot of that toxic bacteria goes back to our gut microbiome, which if we fix that, then it's gonna shift the whole microbiome from head to toe. I hope that makes sense. So, one of the things when you're thinking about shifting that, we talked about glyphosate, I believe, in the last episode or the episode before that. And that's going to be in a lot of products as well. So a lot of um, processed products. Um, glyphosate is the herbicide known um, as Roundup. If any of you have heard that, um, they've paid out a lot of money in lawsuits because of the damage that glyphosate causes to the body and causing different types of cancers and those kind of things. But one of the worst things that glyphosate can do is disrupt um, an amino acid called glycine. Glycine is the most abundant amino acid in all the collagen in our body. And so when we consume a lot of foods that contain glyphosate, it actually destroys the collagen in our body and causes our joints 
and et cetera to break down faster than they really need to. And then sometimes we have kids that are born with really lax joints and that's gonna be actually a uh, collagen disorder that's from glycine that has been broken down and is actually toxic from the chemical uh, glyphosate. And I don't know if any of you did this, but I rode the bean bar when I was little. And so that's when they first started spraying Roundup. We sprayed each other with that stuff all the time. We didn't know, right? So I know that my body was inundated um, with glyphosate. And I know that's one of the reasons why I, you know, I had cancer develop in my body. So getting that glyphosate out of your body and avoiding all foods that you possibly can, because we can't avoid it completely because it's so inundated in this country in particular. And where I live in the Midwest, we have a lot of glyphosate around here. So I feel like sometimes we have glyphosate season um, just because everybody is spraying at the same time, but it is very poisonous and it is everywhere. And you should know that there's certain countries, especially over in European and a lot of different Asian countries, they don't allow that in there. And guess what? They don't have the conditions that we have. They're able to eat gluten without any issues. Their celiac rate is way lower than ours is. So anyway, it's really interesting. And then you have to realize that how we vaccinate in this company, in this country is, you know, and this will be controversial for some of you, but I'm going to say it anyway, because this is how I feel. This is what I feel like the research if you really are to research it, you'll you'll see what goes on there. So one of the many of the vaccines are contaminated with glyphosate and other chemicals because they're actually manufactured, grown on the use of collagen and other proteins that are from these animals that have actually been fed food that contains these chemicals. And so um, these foods are full of glyphosate, and this is going to be transferred then into the actual vaccination. And there is a study that proves this. Um, it's with the MMR vaccine, the measles, mumps, and rubella, that's been ver verified to have this contamination. And so there you go. So if one vaccine contains it, I don't make, not trying to make a sweeping generalization, but many of the same components are used in each and one, every one of those vaccines. Chances are, once they do more research, that they're going to find that those are contaminated with glyphosate and other chemicals as well. And when you give it a vaccine, you're actually bypassing the immune system. That is a, not a natural process that happens in the body. And so you're creating a long-term immune response because your first immune system, right? Our first immune system was not able to identify it. So then you're going to go into that long-term immune response. And that's why we're seeing all these long-term autoimmune conditions, especially in our kids and different childhood cancers that we've never, ever had before. Okay. So it's really important that you understand that. So what we want to make sure is that we're reducing our exposure to that. And most of these chemicals are fat soluble chemicals. And those specific fat soluble chemicals are what really disrupts our gut microbiome um, for sure. And then there's other toxic me metals would be like mercury, lead, arsenic, aluminum. That's why it's really important not to use aluminum in your deodorant. Don't cook in aluminum pans. Don't have aluminum water bottles etc. Make sure that you get your mercury fillings removed safely. If you have questions about that, you want to see a mercury safe dentist. Um, you don't want just somebody drilling those out. But those are all real things that cause toxicity, disrupt the microbiome, but more importantly, cause that autoimmune response that we don't need or want. So as you can see, it's kind of complicated, our immune system response, but it's really vital for you to understand that it all goes back to the microbiome in our body and the toxicity of that microbiome in our guts. That's why it's so important if you have any of these conditions that you fix the microbiome, even if you don't have a gut condition, even if you don't have diarrhea, constipation, or Crohn's, colitis, celiac, whatever it might be, that doesn't mean that your microbiome is beautiful the way it should be. If you have any chronic condition, arthritis, MS, dementia, Alzheimer's, all of that goes back to the microbiome, the toxicity of it, and the imbalance of it. So let's start fixing our microbiome and let's start detoxing our bodies so that our brain and our immune system and everything else works optimally. So I hope this was helpful to you. I hope the sciencey part of it, talking about the immune system was fine, but it's so important that you know about this because knowledge is power. And now that you know, you're going to be held more accountable for it. And those are the small changes that you can make. It doesn't happen overnight, but incrementally, I would encourage every single one of you to start getting the toxicity out of your life, 
work on your microbiome, balance your brain, right? And just allow your body to do what your body was designed to do and just stop suppressing your fever. Stop, stop, you know, taking things to stop the cough. Like your body needs to cough. It's coughing because it wants to get things up, right? There is a time and place for medication. Don't misunderstand me. But most of us feel like we're gonna die when we have 101 fever, <laughs> okay? Allow your body to have the fever. Actually, your fever can get pretty high, which is another topic for another one. So we won't talk about that one today. And you still be okay. Anyway, enough on that. Thank you for joining me in this episode. Make sure that you check out the Calm Mom community so you can join that masterclass. Check out my new cookbook on fermented foods to help balance that microbiome. And I will see you in the next episode. Have a healthy day and thank you for listening. Make sure to like, subscribe, and most importantly, share with people you love or even those you don't, somebody who needs this information. Have a great day.